Hi, my name is Emma Levine, and I am almost 14 years old. All year round, I just love playing with my dogs and drawing and cooking. She was having a loss of appetite. She lost a lot of weight. Wasn't her happy-go-lucky self anymore. Her mood was sort of changing. So I just began taking her to her pediatrician a bunch of times, and we were starting to try to figure out what exactly was going on with her. On August 5th, 2016, a date that I will never forget for the rest of my life, the ultrasound revealed that she had a 10-centimeter tumor on her right kidney. She was diagnosed with a rare, undifferentiated renal soft tissue sarcoma. Emma was just about to turn 11, and what should have been her first day of middle school in sixth grade was actually her first day of chemotherapy. I had seven cycles of chemotherapy and 26 treatments of radiation. It was an intense adult regimen that she right. was on. They'd send her home, and like a day later, you know, 103 fever back, and finally we were like, stop sending us home. I didn't know what was going on, and I was just too sick to even think about it, so I just had to do what I had to do. August of 2017, we went for her scan before the school year was to start, and everything was crystal clear. It looked great. Okay, awesome. She started seventh grade. I went back to work. Everybody, again, continued with normalcy. Her scan in November was three months later and, unfortunately, was not crystal clear anymore. It had metastasized into numerous spots in both of her lungs, completely and utterly devastated. I was heartbroken. I was upset because I didn't really know much about it. I think that's what scared me the most, but I also knew it was something that's really life-changing. She was then classified as stage four, pretty much told us take her home, enjoy Christmas with her, and start treatment after the holidays. Enjoy your time with her right now. I first learned about Emma when a research coordinator of mine for a sleeping consortium ICAT-2 trial met her physician at a national meeting. Her primary oncologist here at home said, we'll prepare Emma's tumor specimen and her samples and we'll send it up to them and they'll do some genetic profiling and then maybe we can get some answers. We found an error in the NTRAC gene called a rearrangement where two genes change places and it was clearly to us activating the cancer. Fortunately, my colleague, Dr. Steve DeVoice, who runs our trials of new drugs, had a Laratractadib trial open. When we were able to find this NTRAC fusion and she was able to receive Laratractinib, the results are very transformative for Emma and her family. We noticed that she started to feel better, and most importantly, her tumor shrank dramatically. This one is from last July, and this is from May. And you can see these are not supposed to be there. Those are very large tumors. And that's how, well, it's pretty amazing. The lower tract nib now, compared to the chemo that I've done in the past, is so vastly different. The chemo is just, I'm, I was constantly sick, and I was like, yeah, I have cancer. But now that I'm on this medication that allows me to just take a few pills a day, I just feel like a normal kid who goes to the doctors frequently just to get a checkup. Almost a year ago, I didn't think I would have been sitting here right now. I just went to my eighth grade dance a few weeks ago and I was pretty much in tears. My whole family was in tears just seeing me in a dress standing. Our philosophy here is that there are certain things that the clinical trial mandates that we do here in Boston at the study center. But for all of the rest of Emma's care, we want that done closer to home by the people who have known her for many years. It's really been a terrific collaboration between the two institutions. My belief is that Congress couldn't spend enough money when it comes to cancer research. And these type of programs need to be more accessible to more people. That funding is one of the most surefire ways of getting there.